Hello everybody, Stuart here from Stubu Gaming. I'm doing a video on Anthem and um, I wanted to do this video as quickly as I could because there's some very good news for a change. So today saw the release of the big update for the main game. So Cataclysm has released and I want to talk about a few of the additions and changes that have been undertaken. Um, I'm not going to go into excessive detail about most of them and I'm just going to show you as generic a gameplay as I possibly can because I don't want to put any spoilers in this video for those of you who do want to uh, take in the new content. I haven't even done the story myself so uh, I'll be doing that when I am on my own. But um, what the actual update brings, it brings new story missions um, where you have to track Dr. Harkon and unravel the mystery of the Cataclysm uh, available to all players who have completed the incursion mission in the main storyline so you have to have reached a certain point in the main story that's not in game so to be perfectly honest you will be able to partake in the Cataclysm uh, event even if you haven't completed the main story so Cataclysm itself, battle Vara Brahmana forces in a dangerous new game mode that evolves over time. Teamwork is heavily encouraged as you battle against the dangerous environment and time itself. Um, I'm not going to go into any more detail on that, but there are some certain um, inclusions with the Cataclysm. So you have things called inversions, which are sets of gameplay modifiers. They can impact how you face the challenges of the Cataclysm. Now, they can be such uh, things as your ultimate charges faster, um, your gear charges faster, you have better precision, um, so you do more damage with, aim, not aimed shots, but with your critical shots against weak points, um, that sort of thing. So they are randomly generated. Uh, at the moment, I'm not sure how often those reset. Uh, the current Cataclysm has just over a day and a half left to go so I'm not sure whether they only reset each time the cataclysm changes I'm not sure so um, we will have to see there is a leaderboard section now so you earn points for each of the main cataclysm events you go into and complete um, and those points are then tallied up and get added to a leaderboard now one of the uh, members of one of my discord channels that I'm a member of is actually rank 3 in the world currently and um, they were at one point rank 2 so uh, well done tainted that's all I can say um, there is seasonal currency which are in the form of crystals now they are major and minor crystals and you get them awarded for playing the game but you can also trade minor crystals for major and major crystals for minor so um, there's no specific time when you will be completely out of one type but have millions of the other um, you will always be able to swap between the two to buy the item that you want um, and those are then used in a seasonal store which is very much like the feature store but uses only the in-game cataclysm specific um, crystals now the only other place you can actually get crystals from is daily challenges of all things. So you can complete certain challenges and they will reward you with a certain type of crystal. Um, either a few hundred of the minor or maybe a couple of the major. Um, so on and so forth. To accompany this, which is not actually part of the update as such, but uh, it does go hand in hand with they've introduced a guild app so the app is available from the iOS um, store and also Google Play and it allows you to create a guild and invite your friends to that guild currently there's not really any information about what that will do in game apart from it puts you in that guild in your actual um, social area it gives you a five times bonus for your alliance score but there again your friends list also does that so I suppose it does mean that if you've got 99 people in your uh, guild but only five of them are on your friends list you will still be getting bonus from the ones that are in your guild but not on your friends list um, I would have thought that guilds would have given you slightly more but to be honest it's all a bonus so no real complaints 
Um, there are alliance systems changes, so again, as I've just stated, your guild now appears in your alliance system as well as just your friends. So I mentioned a few minutes ago that there are inversions. Um, just a list of the ones that there are. There's the ultimate boost, which your ultimate meter from kills is increased. Turbo gear, gear recharge is increased. Lightning rod, close range kills, chain lightning to nearby enemies. Close encounters, shotguns and machine pistols deal increased damage. Precision operator, snipers and marksman rifles deal increased damage. Immunity pack, ammo pickups grant brief immunity to damage. On the edge, at low armor, damage dealt increases. Soldier's reward, killing an enemy restores a small amount of shields. From the skies, heat buildup while hovering is decreased. Air support, defeating an enemy while hovering grants increased damage while on the ground for a short time. Stacks up to five times. Broken magazine, weapons have no spare ammo but um, uh, enemies drop ammo more often. And running on empty, firing the last shot in the weapons clip increases all damage for a short time. So uh, all of those are randomly selected. There has been a change to look and that change is quite significant. They have removed the look stat from all items. So you will never ever again find an item with look on it. However, what they have done is any item that did have look on it, they have now replaced that with an armor boost. So if you had 30 look, for instance, it will now be something along the lines of 80 armor instead percentage of course so plus 80 percent what they have done with luck itself is they've given everybody a base value of 90 luck which was the maximum anyway previously so they've in effect given every player maximum luck on top of that they've increased that when you go into grandmaster 2 or grandmaster 3 difficulty so you end up in a situation where you're actually playing with a significantly increased look pool if you're playing on Grandmaster 2 or 3. So your legendary job drops and your masterwork drops should really really improve. You have a legendary contract chest change so stronghold chests have been added to the end of each legendary contract as well so you don't just get chests for, con uh, for strongholds anymore you get them for those legendary contracts that you will hopefully be doing on a daily basis you get one each day from each of the three uh, factions so you'll get one from your freelancers one from your sentinels and one from your arcanists weapons now this is a big one and i'm not going to go into too much detail um, but they have introduced a number of new weapon classes so you have part, uh, pulse accelerators and um, they use seal technology to generate destructive energy Vault casters, which use seal technology to focus ambient electricity, and blade slingers, which charges a circular projectile with dynamic force. That's their descriptions, not mine. Um, I'd probably have used something a little more clear, but uh, basically, you have in effect something that th uh, throws circular saw blades, you have something that fires electrical uh, beams, so like bolts of electricity and then you have something like a plasma cannon or a plasma rifle. Um, they've changed some difficulties as well. So they've reduced the amount of health for non-boss enemies inside Grandmaster 2 by 50% and stronghold bosses by 65%. Reduce the amount of shields for all enemies inside Grandmaster 2 by 35%. Reduce the amount of health for non-boss enemies inside Grandmaster 3 by 50% and Stronghold bosses by 75% and reduce the amount of shields for all enemies by 20%. So the health changes do not affect Apex creatures. So they've already been adjusted. Now Apex creatures are something along the lines of a legendary Ursix uh, for instance. So they'd already had a slight nerf in a previous update so they have not been nerfed again. So we also have updates for gear, um, starting to introduce additional masterworks for each of the gear slots on the javelin to better improve endgame build diversity. So this is where they're introducing new, not only masterworks, it does include legendary variants as well. Um, but for instance you will have siege artillery, there are, f for the Colossus for instance, there are additional ones such as again and again. 
um, and Venom Storm, which is a burst mortar. You have two more for the Interceptor, two more for the Ranger, and two more for the Storm. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail. If anybody does want to know, please ask the question down in the comments and I will type it out. Um, but I don't want to spoil too much. Um, I'm sorry if you play a Colossus and you didn't want to know the names, but I'm not going to go into too much of what they actually do. Support items. So they have now introduced Masterwork and Legendary support items. So you are no longer going to be stuck with your nasty Epic being your only purple on your Javelin. Uh, they now do have those support items included. And again, they are Masterwork and Legendary versions of the two types you've already got. So the original types for the Colossus were Berserker's Cry and Surging Shield. Um, sorry, um, Battle Cry and Shield Pulse. Uh, Interceptor were Rally Cry and Target Beacon. Ranger was Bulwark Point and Muster Point, and then Storm had Wind Wall and Quickening Field. They've now all got, as I say, Masterwork and Legendary versions. A very big change coming is melee items. So each class has got a melee weapon. Um, that gets equipped in the weapon slot, so you'll now have your primary, secondary, and melee. And you all get a free weapon when you first start the game. So if you're a level 30 character welcome to an epic melee weapon to start with um, they haven't given you a masterwork unfortunately as much as that would have been nice but you have got a, a, an epic rather than a standard which is nice um, if you again if you want to know what types of weapons there are please do ask in the comments um, and I will reply but I'll try and reply with the uh, preface of spoiler because I don't want other people who are not interested to uh, know what to expect so there have been a number of bug fixes as well so a number of challenges that had incorrect descriptions the door into the final boss room of the sunken uh, has been raised slightly in order to provide an easier step up to uh, the frame updated visual effects to improve visibility of masterworks and legendary loot drops Following legendary missions will not count for progress towards daily legendary missions. So, uh, sorry, will now count, not not count. Um, so they will now count for progress towards daily legendary missions, and that's mysterious beginnings, dear diary, and vanishing act. Fixed an issue to allow players to replay mysterious beginnings from the end of expedition screen. Merelda's conversation will now properly complete without ending abruptly, and telling Dax to use cartography skills will now be properly recognised. They fixed some things in the forge as well, so for example instead of saying reduces recoil by 20% uh, by minus 20% we'll now say is reduces recoil by 20% so they've got rid of a double negative so um, obviously reducing something by minus 20% actually increases it so um, they fixed that fixed a number of issues that could cause a crash when in the forge fixed a crash that could happen when swapping gear in the forge Fixed an issue where renaming a loadout changed equipped armour parts. Fixed an issue where the gear score in the forge would be incorrect after swapping a piece of gear. Removed the loading screen when leaving the forge at the end of an expedition. Fixed the stats on some gear that were appearing incorrectly. Fixed an issue that could cause the pilot's javelin to not appear correctly after making appearance changes. Fixed an issue that could cause a pilot's javelin to not appear correctly in the launch bay. Fixed issue of being able to equip the wrong gear on javelins and edited a number of item descriptions for clearer understanding. There have been fixes to the enemy, so enemy Valkyrie attacks should register damage more accurately. Fixed a number of animation issues that could occur to enemies in Temple of the Scar. Fixed an issue where Furies wouldn't spawn in the Heart of Rage Stronghold. High forge force gear now causes reactions on Wyverns fixed an issue where damage was not registering when shooting weak spots on the fury shields improved light intensity of dominion grenades fixed an issue in which outlaw outrage was using the incorrect encounter markers so javelin fixes and improvements damage dealt to nearby enemies when the colossus lands from a tall height now scales correctly so it maintains its usefulness at higher levels the storm can now cancel its air melee with a double jump just like the other javelins can Players who are downed and then fall into water will now float in the water instead of sinking all the way to the bottom. Fixed 
animations for remote military salute to reduce character sliding. Colossus, Colossus specific uh, changes. The Colossus will now utilize the same base values of armor and shields as the rest of the javelins, but has an inherent multiplying factor on all base values that generates the larger armor and shield pools. This change will better allow the Colossus to utilize universal components without sacrificing an extraordinary amount of defense to do so. There is a note to that, because of this change inside the forge, the base value of the Colossus specific components will go down significantly, but the amount of armor added to the Colossus should remain roughly the same, since the lower value, base value is multiplied by the Colossus new inherent bonus. So, um, whereas before it was saying approximately 15,000, it's now saying approximately 3,000. So it is a considerable uh, reduction, but they've added it to the Colossus itself rather than the component, which does make a bit more sense. So general UI fixes, fixed squad list sometimes showing up instead of friends list. Fixed an issue with a friends list would not show up when a player's origin status is set to invisible. Um, showing the map in an expedition now centers it on the current player position. Fixed an issue where swapping extended special arms magazine was causing the player's hood to display ammo count incorrectly. Library and cortex entries now properly marked as red and persistent upon closing the UI. Weapon and gear fixes. Um, we're near the end guys, so don't worry. Uh, weapon and gear fixes. Death from above muzzle fixed overexposed bright elements. The Colossus component reinforced hull has been renamed to high capacity munitions to better reflect its functionality. Colossus component grand entrance now triggers its explosion when falling from a shorter distance than before. The new distance is roughly the equivalent to a double jump height. Armor and shield value changes. Universal components armor and shield has gone from 10 to 45 plus its rarity shift. Um, so you'll get that's base at standing uh, starting level of one. So if you go up to a level 75 item, obviously those will be significantly higher. Um, universal components armor and shield for masterwork and legendary are 25 up to 145. So yeah, it's significantly more. Um, Combo and ultimate bonus changes, masterwork properties that apply a duration based bonus um, will still apply its bonus to combos and ultimates. Combos and ultimates damage will now only gain damage bonuses from inscriptions if that inscription is specifically the combo or ultimate damage bonus inscription. Inscription bonuses that apply to a larger set of items like elemental damage or all global damage will not apply to combo and ultimate damage. Masterwork proc effects, the damage value from masterwork proc effects such as Ralna's Blaze or Thunderbolt of Ivenia will now deal its damage based on the item level of the item that is proccing the effect instead of the overall gear score of the javelin. And the following guns will now properly display their primer on uh, or detonator effect. Ralna's Blaze, Sentinel's Vengeance and Siege Breaker and detonators Artinia's Gambit and Truth of Tarsus. And then finally, fixed an issue in which Cryoglave and Absolute Zero could not fire its multiple charges if it was in the process of recharging. So um, that's it guys, that's all of the changes that have been made. And uh, wow, there are a lot of them. <laughs> I can honestly say that after playing it for a few hours, I'm very impressed with the update. In fairness, I wasn't expecting much after all of the and public test server information from the PC players but maybe maybe I'm um, I don't know a little more resilient and a little more understanding but um, these changes have definitely made me um, glad that I stuck with the game a number of my friends didn't and they have come back in fairness they have come back um, to play the Cataclysm and most of them have said that they will be coming back more often because it is that significantly improved. We will see what happens for the future, but I do believe that all of the comments that Anthem is dead were a little bit premature. Um, maybe they should have waited until this has been out for a while and see what happens. But I, I do think that it's made a significant number of very positive steps. Increasing the number of items is always going to be a bonus. 
um, the loot dropping, removing luck and just adding it to the actual base game rather than to items is an absolute brilliant idea. Um, it does mean that everyone has the same sort of drop chance um, and all of the other changes are very very welcome. I'm really glad they've included melee weapons. Um, I'm glad they're doing a lot of balance changes. Some of the bosses were definitely bullet sponges. Um, for instance, if I went to a, a, a GM3 Heart of Rage, I could literally empty my entire clip and reserve ammo from my legendary auto cannon into the monitor and it wouldn't scratch his health. So doing that sort of thing is a little bit um, disheartening, I suppose. Whereas it's going to be very interesting to go back into a GM3 Heart of Rage and see his health come down, um, which I am honestly can say that I do believe it will. Well guys, that's this video. Um, I, as I say, I wanted to get it out as quickly as I could. I hope you have enjoyed this and found it interesting. Have you actually left Anthem? Had you basically given it up for dead? If you have, let me know down in the comments whether you think that this is going to be enough to bring you back. I would be very interested to see what you would like to see. If this isn't enough, what you actually want. Um, because... I am still of the opinion that the core gameplay of Anthem is some of the best that I have played in this type of game. Bearing in mind it's a third person shooter and not a first person shooter. If it was a third per first person shooter we'd be having a completely different conversation. Um, because the entire method of rotating your character, turning corners etc is completely different. But as it is a third person shooter, I do think that the actual gameplay itself is the one thing they did get right with this particular game. And I think that is the reason so many people have given this more of a break than they probably would have normally with the lack of content and communication. Now I think the lack of communication has been because they were actually working on making this uh, update work um, so I'm quite glad that they spent their time working on the update rather than telling people that they're working on the update so um, I think it will hopefully pay off but anyway that's enough of me talking um, I'm sorry this video has been so long but I did want to cover everything that's happened everything that they've done and no doubt I'll be doing more videos in the future but um, let me down in the comments let me know down in the comments what uh, what you think, whether it is enough to bring you back, and uh, yeah, I do hope that uh, I do see you playing this game again. Well guys, if you have found this useful and enjoyed it, please make sure you do click that like button. If you're new to the channel, or you so far have not done so, please make sure you do subscribe and click that bell icon, and um, they really do help me out, and the bell does allow you to know when I upload my next video. Um, who knows, the next one might be telling you that there's been a huge update to one of your favourite games, um, such as Anthem. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but yeah, please do make sure you do subscribe. And uh, thanks very much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you for my next video very, very soon. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.